Hello, and welcome. In this video, we're going to solve a circuit problem step by step. Our goal is to find the voltage labeled V0 in the circuit diagram you see on the screen. We'll be using a powerful technique called the superposition theorem. If you're new to circuit analysis, don't worry. I'm going to break down every single step in great detail, so you can follow along easily. First, let's take a close look at our circuit. On the left, we have a current source, indicated by a circle with an arrow inside. This source is pushing a constant current of 6 amperes, or 6 amps, into the circuit. In the middle, we have a network of resistors. There are two, 2 ohm resistors connected in parallel. Below them, connected in series, is a 1 ohm resistor. This 1 ohm resistor is special because it's where we need to find our target voltage, V0. Notice the plus and minus signs across this resistor. This tells us the polarity, we are measuring the voltage with the top end being positive relative to the bottom end. Finally, on the right side of the circuit, we have another source. This one is a voltage source, shown as a circle with plus and minus signs inside. It provides a constant voltage of 18 volts. This is connected in series with a 4 ohm resistor. So, we have a circuit with two different power sources, a 6 amp current source and an 18 volt voltage source. When a circuit has multiple sources like this, it can seem complicated. This is where the superposition theorem comes in. The superposition theorem is a wonderful trick that lets us simplify the problem. It states that in any linear circuit with multiple independent sources, the total response, like a voltage or current, in any part of the circuit is equal to the sum of the responses caused by each source acting alone. In simple terms, it means we can pretend only one source is turned on at a time. We calculate the voltage V0 caused by that single source. Then, we turn that source off, turn another one on, and calculate the new V0. We repeat this for all the sources in the circuit. In the end, we just add up all the individual results to get our final answer. So, let's apply this. We'll say that our final voltage, V0, is the sum of two parts. The equation is, V0 equals V1 plus V2. Here, V1 will be the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor when only the 6 amp current source is active. And V2 will be the voltage across that same resistor when only the 18 volt voltage source is active. Let's find V1 and V2 one by one. Our first step is to find V1. To do this, we need to keep the 6 amp current source active and turn off the 18 volt voltage source. Now, this brings up a very important rule how do we turn off a source? To turn off a voltage source, we set its voltage to zero. A component with zero volts across it is a perfect wire, also known as a short circuit. So, we will replace the 18 volt source with a simple, straight line or wire. To turn off a current source, we set its current to zero. A component with zero current flowing through it is a break in the circuit, also known as an open circuit. We'll see this in the next step. So, for calculating V1, we redraw our circuit. The 6 amp source stays where it is. But the 18 volt source on the right is replaced by a wire. Let's analyze this new, simpler circuit. We have the 6 amp current flowing from the source. This current travels to a junction where it needs to split. Some of it will go through the middle part of the circuit, and some will go through the right hand branch. Our goal is to find the voltage V1 across the 1 ohm resistor in the middle. To do that, we first need to find the current flowing through that 1 ohm resistor. Let's simplify the circuit a bit more to make it easier. Look at the two, 2 ohm resistors. They are connected in parallel. The formula for the equivalent resistance of two parallel resistors is the first resistance multiplied by the second resistance, all divided by the sum of the first and second resistance. So, the equivalent resistance is 2 times 2, which is 4, divided by 2 plus 2, which is also 4. The result is 4 divided by 4, which gives us 1 ohm. We can now imagine those two, 2 ohm resistors being replaced by a single 1 ohm resistor. This new 1 ohm equivalent resistor is in series with the original 1 ohm resistor where we are measuring V1. When resistors are in series, we just add their values. So, the total resistance of this entire central branch is 1 ohm plus 1 ohm, which equals 2 ohms. So, our circuit is now even simpler, the 6 amp current from the source splits between two parallel branches. 
The central branch has a total resistance of 2 ohms, and the right-hand branch has the 4 ohm resistor. We can now use the current divider rule to find how much of that 6 amp current goes down our central branch. The rule says that the current in one branch is equal to the total current, multiplied by the resistance of the other branch, all divided by the sum of the resistances of both branches. Let's call the current in our central branch I middle. I middle equals the total current, which is 6 amps, multiplied by the resistance of the other branch, which is 4 ohms, divided by the sum of both branch resistances, which is 2 ohms plus 4 ohms. So, I middle equals 6 times 4, divided by 2 plus 4. This is 24 divided by 6, which gives us 4 amps. Great! We now know that 4 amps of current are flowing through the central branch. This 4 amp current flows through the 1 ohm resistor we care about. Now, we can use Ohm's law, which states that voltage equals current times resistance. So, V1 equals the current, which is 4 amps, times the resistance, which is 1 ohm. V1 equals 4 times 1, which is 4 volts. So, the contribution to our final voltage from the 6 amp source is 4 volts. We found V1. Now for the second part of our problem, finding V2. This time, we keep the 18 volt voltage source active and turn off the 6 amp current source. Remember our rule for turning off sources? To turn off a current source, we set its current to zero. This means we replace it with an open circuit, a gap, or a break in the wire. So, let's redraw our circuit again. The 18 volt source and the 4 ohm resistor are on the right. The middle section with the 2 ohm and 1 ohm resistors is still there. But on the left, where the 6 amp source used to be, there is now just an open gap. Because there's an open circuit on the left, no current can flow in that entire branch. This simplifies things tremendously. We are left with a single, simple series circuit loop. In this loop, the 18 volt source is driving current through three things connected in series. First, the 4 ohm resistor. Second, the 1 ohm resistor, where we want to find V2. And third, the parallel combination of the two, 2 ohm resistors. We already calculated the equivalent resistance of the two parallel 2 ohm resistors. It's 1 ohm. So, the total resistance in our series loop is the sum of all the individual resistances. Our total equals 4 ohms, plus 1 ohm, plus the equivalent 1 ohm. So, our total equals 6 ohms. Now, we can use the voltage divider rule to find V2, the voltage across just the 1 ohm resistor. The rule states that the voltage across a specific resistor in a series circuit is equal to the total voltage, multiplied by the resistance of that specific resistor, all divided by the total resistance of the series circuit. So, V2 equals the total voltage, which is 18 volts, multiplied by the resistance of interest, which is 1 ohm, all divided by the total resistance, which is 6 ohms. The calculation is, V2 equals 18 times 1, divided by 6. This is 18 divided by 6, which gives us 3 volts. Before we move on, let's quickly check the polarity. The current from the 18 volt source flows clockwise. As it passes through the 1 ohm resistor, it goes from top to bottom. This creates a voltage drop where the top is positive and the bottom is negative. This matches the polarity defined for V0 in the original problem so our V2 is a positive 3 volts. Excellent! We found V2. We are now at the final and easiest step. The superposition theorem tells us that the total voltage V0 is simply the sum of the individual voltages we calculated. The equation is, V0 equals V1 plus V2. We found that V1 is 4 volts. And we found that V2 is 3 volts. So, V0 equals 4 volts plus 3 volts which means our final answer is, V0 equals 7 volts. Summary and conclusion. Let's quickly recap what we did. We were asked to find the voltage V0 in a circuit with two sources. We used the superposition theorem, which allowed us to break the problem into two simpler parts. First, we calculated the voltage due to the 6 amp current source alone, which we called V1. To do this, we replaced the 18 volt source with a short circuit. We found that V1 was 4 volts. Second, we calculated the voltage due to the 18 volt voltage source alone, which we called V2. To do this, 
we replaced the 6 amp source with an open circuit. We found that V2 was 3 volts. Finally, we added these two results together, 4 volts plus 3 volts gave us our final answer of 7 volts. The superposition theorem is an incredibly useful tool for analyzing circuits with multiple sources. By handling one source at a time, it turns a complicated problem into a series of much simpler ones. The key is to remember the rules, replace inactive voltage sources with short circuits, and replace inactive current sources with open circuits. Thank you for watching, and I hope this detailed walkthrough has helped you understand how to use the superposition theorem to solve circuit problems.